countries. The possible significance of the racial differences in egg production I will return to later. The speed with which the races mature physically is also a source of differentiation, with black children being relatively fast maturers and oriental ch children slow maturers relative to Caucasian children. In the United States, black babies have a shorter gestation period than white babies. By week 39, 51% of black children have been born, while the figure for whites is 33%. Similar results have been obtained in Europe, comparing women of European ancestry with black women from Africa. Motor development over the first three years also differentiates the races on many well-standardized tests with measures made from birth to 12 months in coordination and head lifting, in muscular strength and rolling over, and at 15 to 20 months in the ability to put on clothing. Thus, oriental children typically don't walk until 13 months compared to 12 months for white children and 11 months for black children. Other life cycle traits, including longevity, show a similar set of differences between the three populations. In personality and temperament, the data show that across ages, across traits, and across methods, that in terms of uninhibited temperament, Blacks are more uninhibited than Caucasians, and Caucasians are more uninhibited than Orientals. With infants and young children, observer ratings are the main method employed, whereas with adults, the use of standardized tests are more frequent. For example, a study carried out with 825 four to six-year-olds in Quebec preschoolers found that teachers consistently reported better social adjustment and less hostility aggression from Orientals than from Caucasians, and from Caucasians than from black children. With adults, I have recently averaged the results from 25 countries using a well-known personality questionnaire and found that eight Oriental samples with a sample size of over 4,000, were less sociable and more anxious than 30 Caucasian samples with a sample size of 20,000, who were less sociable and more anxious than four African samples with a sample size of 2,000. The same racial pattern of whites being between Orientals and blacks is also to be found with reproductive or sexual restraint. Surveys of the world literature show that Orientals are the most restrained, whether measured by intercourse frequencies, premarital, marital, or extramarital, reproductive speed, age of first intercourse, age of first pregnancy, or number of pregnancies per unit of time, primary sexual characteristics, secondary sexual characteristics, or biologic control of behavior. concomitant differences are observed in sexual attitudes and in sexually transmitted diseases, including AIDS. In addition, social organization can be studied. Stable social organization depends on following rules, 
This can be indexed by marital functioning, mental durability, and law-abidingness. With respect to crime, for example, in both the United States and Western Europe, race is one of the best predictors, and quite possibly in other parts of the world, too. For Chinese and Japanese, whether assessed in their home countries, North America, or the United Kingdom, have a lower incidence of crime than do Europeans. African-descended people, while consisting of less than one-eighth of the population of the United States or of London, England, currently account for over 50% of the crime in both places. Since about the same proportion of victims say that their assailant was black, the arrest statistics cannot be blamed entirely on police prejudice. This morning I read estimates in the Globe and Mail that confirm that these figures appear to apply to Canada, or at least Toronto. Blacks currently appear to make up between 2 and 5 percent of Toronto's population. And they also appear to be responsible for between 32 and 40 percent of Toronto crime. Finally, we turn again to the issue of intelligence test scores. Since the time of World War I, when widespread testing began, blacks have scored about 15 IQ points lower than whites on tests of intelligence and educational achievement, whether tested in the United States, the United Kingdom, Jamaica, Nigeria, Tanzania, or Uganda. Fewer people are aware, however, that Orientals score about five points higher than do whites on exactly the same measuring instruments, whether tested in Canada, the United States, Japan, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Malaysia, Singapore, or other countries. It may also come as a surprise to learn that the same order is observed with measures of brain size, whether indexed by cranial capacity from inside the skull or brain weight as measured at autopsy. I have averaged numerous estimates, some quite recent, finding for cranial capacity, Orientals 1,448 cubic centimeters, whites 1,408 cubic centimeters, He's talking about the blacks, brain. 1,334 cubic centimeters. For brain weight, Orientals 1,351 grams, whites 1,336 grams, and blacks 1,286 grams. It is noteworthy that even the most critical of reviewers, such as Stephen Jay Gould, from his own estimates, I have observed exactly the same rank ordering, finding a one cubic inch of difference between each of the three races. If you have a look at page 66 of his book, The Mismeasure of Man, you can calculate the figures for yourself. Moreover, while brain weight begins to decrease around age 25 in European samples, the decrease may not begin until the mid-30s in Japanese samples. That, very briefly, is the evidence on racial differences. To summarize, on over 60 different measures, including brain size and intelligence, on speed of physical maturation, on personality and temperament, and on sexuality and social organization, Caucasians fall consistently between Oriental and black populations. The second question to be addressed is what are the causes of these differences? Most people will argue that the racial differences that I have listed are due entirely to environmental factors, to the effects of poverty, socioeconomic status, to biases in the tests and in biases in society. I do not deny that these factors are operative. Indeed, I suggest that they may account for as much as 50% of the variance. What I am arguing, however, is that the other 50% is due to genetic and evolutionary mechanisms. Many large-scale studies of twins and of adoptees have now been carried out, showing the importance of genetic factors on almost all the variables that I have mentioned, including temperament, strength of the sex drive, health, longevity, as well as crime, intelligence, and educational achievement. But you can ask, can these figures, calculated mostly on white populations, be generalized to other races? 
I believe they can. And I am publishing papers to that effect in scientific journals. The argument is somewhat technical, but in essence, it is that the racial group differences which exist are most noticeable on those subtests which are the most genetically influenced. For example, there is a positive correlation between a subtest's heritability and the degree to which it differentiates the races. And that is a differential prediction. A positive correlation is expected only if racial group differences are due to the genes. If the differences had been due entirely to the environment, the correlation should have been a negative one. Much data from other researchers can also be interpreted in support of my argument. For example, a 17-year adoption study of black children adopted into white middle-class families has shown that the black children's IQ and educational achievement and also their social deviance is better predicted by their genetic background than by their upbringing environment. Now the ultimate aim of science is causally to explain the world around us rather than simply to describe it. Most explanations of the data I have reviewed tend to be highly particularistic. Can you guys hear me that okay if I talk over the audio? To a particular domain. Let me know in the chat if you For can hear example, me. For example, black scores on IQ tests are attributed to bias inherent in the tests. Black crime is attributed to poverty. Poor performance in schools is blamed on prejudice by teachers, and so on. None of those explanations, by the way, will explain the higher than Caucasian performance by Orientals. Orientals, for example, had lower crime rates than whites, even when they were lower than whites in socioeconomic status. The crux of my argument, and I'd really like to emphasize here that this is the essential point, is that whatever theory you come up with to explain the differences, that theory really has to explain the totality of the findings. It has to explain why there is a pattern one, two, three, with Caucasians falling consistently between Oriental and Black populations on variables such as the production of twins and brain size, and even variables such as the depth of the voice on which Caucasians again fall between the other two races. So it's not just IQ and crime or educational performance. It's much more deeply embedded in evolution than that. One theory, which I believe goes quite a long way in making sense of the racial group differences, stems out of the literature on animal evolution. This is the theory of R and K reproductive strategies. Essentially, an animal can replicate its genes, which is what evolution is all about, in one of two extreme ways. Either be an R, like oysters, and produce hundreds of thousands of offspring, but give no parental care, and expect almost all of them to die. Or be K, and produce only one infant every four or five or six years, but lavish enormous parental care on them. This girl's These getting science data. strategies among animals go along with a wide range of life history traits. The more K an animal group, that is, the fewer eggs it produces, the longer is its period of gestation, the higher the birth weight, the more delayed the onset of physical maturity, the older the age of first reproduction, the longer the life, the larger the brain, and the greater the degree of social organization. Thus diverse organismic characteristics, not otherwise relatable, are presumed to co-vary along a single dimension. Because the races differ on many of the K characteristics, it is hypothesized that Orientals are more K-selected than Caucasoids, who in turn are more K-selected than Africans.